Every year, Muslims all over the world abstain from eating and drinking from true dawn to sunset for 30 days at a time. They willingly struggle against the temptation of taking a bite of food or a sip of cool water, even though they are hungry and thirsty for many hours on end. But why is that? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordain this? What are some of the wisdoms of this great act of worship, indeed this pillar of Islam, fasting? Is it just to empathize with the poor and needy? Or is there an even greater wisdom? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother Abu Abdis Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarramah. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, kutiba alaykum al siyam, kama kutiba ala ladina min qabalikum, la alakum tatakun. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those before you, so that you may achieve taqwa. This ayah is in Surah Al Baqarah. Fasting during Ramadan is like a personal lesson to gain something called taqwa. But what exactly is taqwa? Taqwa means fearing Allah, being mindful and conscious of Him, and having self control. Therefore, as per this ayah, where Allah says, La'allakum tattaqun, that fasting was prescribed upon you and those before you so that you may achieve taqwa, as per this ayah, we learn that fasting is not just about missing meals. It's about purifying our hearts, bettering our actions, becoming more God conscious. In other words, having more taqwa and always knowing that Allah sees, hears and knows all of our deeds and actions. But how does fasting help us to achieve taqwa? Well, the Prophet said, if one does not abandon falsehood and acting in accordance with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for him to abandon his food and drink. This hadith was reported by Bukhari. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu words in this hadith remind us that fasting is a means through which Allah encourages us to develop quality taqwa within ourselves. It's about aligning our actions and words with truthfulness and righteousness. In other words, if we cannot abandon the words and deeds that are normally haram, forbidden in Islam, outside the fast, then abandoning things that are usually halal, food, drink and marital relations, while fasting loses its meaning. The reason you're avoiding these halal things during your fast, food and drink, is to please Allah. So what about those things that are normally haram outside of the fasting times? Things like backbiting or gossiping, slandering, lying, cheating, cheating at work or in business, looking at or listening to haram, and so on and so forth. Surely, if we are avoiding halal things during the fast, we should especially and more so avoid the things that are always haram, even outside of the fast. Ramadan is all about training and mastering our desires, resisting the temptations and navigating challenging moments without giving in. It's a reflection of our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, while we abstain from food and drink, knowing that we can eat and drink in just a few hours time, we should also remember those who are not as fortunate, those who need our empathy, the poor and needy. That should motivate us to give us charity. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the most charitable in Ramadan. Fasting also has profound health benefits too. While we don't specifically fast for these health perks, they're undeniable. Fasting aids in weight management, gives our digestive tract a much needed break and has remarkable effects on lowering bad cholesterol and blood pressure. Of course, unless we stuff ourselves silly at iftar time. But let's not forget, Ramadan isn't about starving ourselves or going on a crazy diet. It's more like a balanced fasting routine that keeps us healthy. We don't have to eat specific things. We can have whatever is halal just in a sensible way at iftar time and beyond all the way up until true dawn. The physiological benefits of fasting extend to lowering blood sugar and cholesterol levels, making it an ideal recommendation for certain medical conditions. However, it's crucial to note that those with severe health conditions are exempted from fasting as their health takes precedence. Ramadan isn't just about spirituality or health, it's about a complete transformation. While increasing in awareness of Allah, people become kinder and our hearts feel more at ease. 
on Laylatul Qadr. When the angels descend, this night holds immense blessings and an even greater opportunity for absolute forgiveness. The Prophet Muhammad said, whoever stands in prayer during the night of Qadr, the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, with Iman, faith, and hoping for its reward, all his previous sins will be forgiven. Allahu Akbar. As we prepare for Ramadan, let's remember the significance of this blessed month. Let's make the most of it by increasing in acts of worship, reducing sins, and generously giving to those in need. Jazakumullahu khayran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our fasting, salahs, charity, and du'as during this blessed month. I'm your brother Abu Abdul Salam, speaking to you from Makkah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.